Hello and welcome to another Ionic tutorial video and today we are talking about how to use web services and so a web service is typically um, some kind of process that you have behind the scenes it could be your web service it could be um, a web service you've set up like on another server that processes some information retrieves information from a database or it could be someone else's web service there are a lot of great web services out and available. Some are free, some are not, uh, but you can use these to enhance the experience of your app. So for example, um, some different web services you may or may not be familiar with. The first one uh, is the one we're going to use for this application today is the MovieDB or the MovieDB.org. Has a very nice um, API, which is a web service for accessing information about movies. If you're interested in making apps about space launches or um, rockets in general, launchlibrary.net is a great API that allows you to get information about space launches. And just something a little more practical, um, services like USPS have uh, web tools and APIs and web services that you can connect your app to. You know, if you're wanting to validate that an address you got from a user is correct or something like that, or pull up um, city based on zip code or you know those kinds of useful things um, you can sign up and get an account so that you can use the developer center on these kinds of services so as I said the app we're going to make today is going to be about movies so I'm going to be using the moviedb.org API now this is a free API that you can use to make apps but you do need to sign up for an account so I've already signed up for an account and gotten what's called an API key, which is what lets the web service know, the administrators know, which apps are accessing their data so they can kind of keep track of who all is using what. So we're gonna start over here in our blank Ionic Creator um, app. And what I wanna do is I wanna set up an app that allows me to search through the movie database and get some basic information about movies. So I'm gonna set up a search control and that's an actual control in here called a search. It's got the nice little search icon. Um, so you can put in the placeholder search, right? Good stuff. I'm gonna add this to the model, ng model, as movie.name. And then what I want is when they type in the search box, we're gonna have some information about movies show up down here. We're gonna use one of those list controls like we've looked at earlier. And so uh, we're going to use ng change. So ng change fires every time the contents of the box changes. And every time that does, I'm going to call a function called search movie db that I'm going to end up writing. Okay, so our list of things that we want to show up down here, um, I'm going to set up a list item. And I probably actually want a thumbnail list item so let's do that thumbnail list item so that looks nice um, okay so here's one of the the tricky things about creator you saw I add this it added this and if we look over here on our pages section you can see that it added this list item directly to the form and it didn't actually create me a list with the list item inside So sometimes this is what we have to do we have to create um, We, and use the, the bigger list, which is going to give us several items, and then just go through and delete two of them so that we have one. So now see, we have a list and then a list item. If you just add the one list item and without the list, you're not going to be able to run through it like I've shown you previously um, and get you know how many ever movies we pull out of the list. And it's one of those tricky things about Creator you've got to pay attention to. Okay, so let's modify our item here. Uh, we want a thumbnail type. And our thumbnail, I'm gonna switch this over to the text input. If you look at the API documentation, you'll see that they give you this URL of where you can find images, uh, thumbnail images of uh, their 92 by 92. And we use a template tag called movie.posterpath. Po movie and so this will pull up the movie poster 92 by 92, nice thumbnail size. 
for each movie in the list. So this, I got this URL from the documentation. And so that is what is going to give us our, our thumbnail images. Now our content down here is also gonna be in template tags. So I'm gonna want my movie dot, uh, we want the original title. And again, you get all this from the documentation. So when you go look up um, details and things and read about the documentation, that's where you find out what stuff's named. Um, then movie dot, well, let's do release date. So that's what we'll see. We'll see the title, release date. We'll get the little thumbnail. And then we're going to have to set up our ng repeat. And we've done an ng repeat before. So you know um, kind of how this works. It's kind of like a for each. So basically we're, we're going to pull in an array, because we've looked at arrays before on how they work. We're gonna pull in an array of movies from the web service, and then we're gonna loop through it. So basically our for each is movie in movies. So our array will be named movie, each or movies, each individual movie that we wanna access will be available as a movie. So we can do things like dot release date, dot title, dot poster path, those kinds of things. So this is basically our UI. Now, additional functionality, the first thing I want to do is get this list set up, but eventually what I want to do is click on this and actually take us over to another page where we can view some details about the movie. So let's come down to the code and get this list working first before we add our next page. All right, so I'm going to need to set up a separate, H or a separate JavaScript file for accessing the movie API simply because it makes it easier and it makes the code a little cleaner. So I'm going to add a new file down here named movies.js. And remember, we have to go into our code settings. It automatically adds it here, um, but we need to add it as an Angular module. And so we go under Angular module and we add movies, right? So we make sure it's in this list here. And then this is the file that we'll put the information in, basically like a separate little module so that we can access the API. Just deleting some template stuff. All right, so we're gonna give this a name, var app equals. We have our Angular module. What do we wanna name it? We said it was named movies. Great. Okay, so we're gonna set up an app factory also named movies. And so our function is looking for that HTTP because remember this is a web service, we're accessing it through the web. Okay, so basically how this, this um, well not this particular API, most of them work the same way. We're gonna set up a function that calls the URL we need embedded with the movie that we're looking for, whatever's coming out of the search box, and then returns that long list of movies as our array so that we can use that. All right, so I'm gonna set up a variable here, cached data. So we don't want to make too many calls to the web service because overall, um, all that traffic is going to slow our app down. So we want to make sure that we are downloading data that we can then use and we're not continuing to call back to the web service. Now I'm going to paste in this big old URL string and then I'll explain it because I've got it typed up over here with my API key in it. So the URL is apimoviedb.org slash three. They give you all of this. Search movie query, and then what are you searching for? So we're gonna encode URI, which basically strips out like spaces and special characters and makes sure that the string is ready for transmission over the internet, the name of the movie that we're looking for, and then the API key. Now this is my API key, so don't use this. You'll need to sign up for your own because uh, if, if you use it, then they might block access to the app and then that would be no fun. So we're gonna use an HTTP get. And that get call 
is ultimately the operation that we use to retrieve data from a web service. And so our get call needs to take in the URL and um, the, that mode and the key and the name. I'm just concatenating this all together. Um, oops, not done. Um, and then if we're successful, so we the get is going to take this whole big concatenated thing and it's going to send it out to the web service. If we're successful, so on success, we're going to run a function. So in this function, and I always like to add in console log this thing right here just to make sure if I'm getting an error, I want to see what I actually sent to the web service. So I always like to put that in there. We're going to get back a JSON object. And so remember, we've talked a little bit about JSON in, in the lesson, um, our JavaScript object notation. It's basically the alternative to XML. So it's going to be like a big old string of information. And what we want to do with that big old string of information is capture it and then use it. So I'm going to do another console log so that we can make sure that we know what our JSON looks like. So JSON dot stringify our data because data, this, this data right here in this function, this is what we got back from the web service. And this stringify function, JSON dot stringify, it's going to make it readable so that we can actually look at it and see what's inside of it. All right, so that cached data variable that I made earlier, we're going to put our results into that. And then we're going to do a callback data dot results. So because this is in a separate file, right, we're in this movies.js, whoever called this function, we want to just call them back and give this data back to them so that they can have it and do whatever they want with it. So let's finish that up. Okay. Now we're, we're not quite done yet. We want to do a return. So let me count my curly braces here because I'll get all, I'll get off on my curly braces. All right. So we're going to do a return. We're going to make a list that calls that get data function. And we're going to do a find our function, the name, whatever it is that we're looking for, the callback. And we can log that name if you want to make sure. And I do a lot of debugging steps in here. So our movie is going to be the cached data dot filter whatever we've entered and then we'll return the ID for that particular movie and we end with a response code down here in the square brackets so I make sure curly brace and curly brace and curly brace okay no errors from this. I know that's a little tricky to look at. So hopefully that's made sense as I've walked you through it and that wasn't too confusing. But let's quickly hook this up so that we can make sure that it works. So come back over to our page J, uh, JS, the controller for the page. So remember anytime that we're using a um, dependency, we've added something to a dependency in that code settings, we have to add it here as well. Um, so we're just going to add movies to our list in our function. I'm going to set up uh, scope.movie so that I have that object set up and it knows that it's going to have a name property. And then our function call. So search movie db. That was what I named this function earlier when I added it to the on click, the ng click of the. Um, or I'm sorry, not the ng click, the search box. So we want our movies.list that we set up. We're going to send it scope.movie.name. We're going to pass it or call that function with movies. And then what we get back 
we're going to put into scope.movie. So that equals movies. So this here is our list. This is our list. So when we do our for each, right, our ng repeat movie in movie movies, that's what we should get. And that's all that needs to go in here. So make sure you've got everything saved. Let's check it out. And remember, you can watch. Let me open the console. You can watch, too. So as we type something in here, look at all this. This is that JSON object. Huge, right? So we can look at that JSON object and see what are we getting back from the web service. So coming back to the app, I should be able to type something in here, <laughs> whatever you want to type in here. It should be doing just a basic string search. And then here, look, we're getting all of these nice thumbnails. Remember from that, it was kind of a static URL plus that ID that told it which picture to give us. We're getting the name and we're getting the release date. And we're, we're doing that for all of the items that we're returning. But if you are wanting to check, remember you can go to the console and inspect. And here is all of that JSON data. We can see everything that we're printing out. Um, and our results are, we can see our poster path. We can get the IDs and everything and look at what we're actually getting returned from that web service. And so you can just type um, anything in here. So in the second part of this, I'm going to do a second video where I'm going to show you how to set up that other page, pass over the ID of the movie we want, and when we click on a particular movie, we can get some further details. So stick around for the second half of this, and uh, hopefully this has helped you if you're having any trouble getting hooked up with uh, basic web service with your Ionic app.